Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom. This is the day that God has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in this day. Another wonderful day, another wonderful Shabbat. Hallelujah. To serve the Most High. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yah. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to let our family sing you a song, so y'all give us a song. Let's turn this around a little bit. right into this lesson. Today's lesson is tired, titled, The Increase of Lawlessness in the World, the Book of Enoch. Now, I want to talk about this for a minute because I need you to really understand how things went down in the past and you'll see what's going on in the future. Okay. Yes, hallelujah. Um, <clears throat> first of all, let's say this here. When was the law given? The law came... Under Moses, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, how is it that we see the scripture referring to lawlessness before the time of the law was given? They had no law, right? Mm -hmm. I want you to understand how things went down. So, I'm going to paint a picture for you. I'm going to paint a story for you. And I want you to really think about this picture and this story I'm about to paint for you, right? So... 
you know what happened in the scriptures, right? You have the time of Adam and Eve, and and then you have um, what happened after the time of Adam and Eve. Okay, and I'm gonna go there because I want you to see this clearly. Okay, so you know Adam and Eve was um, born in the garden, and you got the story of Cain and Abel. Okay, mm -hmm. and then it walks you on down. And you notice the time of, um, I went too far on this thing. It moves so fast. Okay, let's go now. Okay. So, when was the time of the flood? The time of the flood took place in... During the go. time of Noah. That's right, during the time of Noah. I'm trying to get the scriptures for it. So, <clears throat> Okay. So, chapter 6. So, it really just goes kind of quick from, from the time that Adam and Eve was born to the time of Noah. Okay. But what happened during that time before the time of Noah or before the time of Noah? I'm going to explain to you what went down. Okay. So, you had these people that were born. Okay. People um, had children. Sons and daughters were born. Okay. In the world. And what happened was, I want you to think about this, right? They were pretty much just living their lives. Things didn't get real reckless, but there were a lot of um, nomads, people who went from place to place. Mm -hmm. It wasn't no cities built at the time, okay? Mm -hmm. So now I want to fast forward to what happened. If you notice, it jumps right to where it says, And it came to pass, just chapter 6 of Genesis, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. And the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair, then he took them wives all of all which they chose. And Yahuwah said, My spirit should not always strive with man, for he is also flesh. He also is flesh, and yet his days shall be numbered 120 years. And there were giants in the earth in those days. After that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, they bare children unto them, and the same became mighty men, which were of old men renowned. Okay. And Yah saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So what happened? <clears throat> there was an interference mm -hmm. from an outside source, an mm -hmm. entity mm -hmm. interfered with things. Mm -hmm. So this is where we're coming from. So, you had what was referred to in those days as righteousness and unrighteousness, right? Mm -hmm. This is why before the time of the law, the scripture called who? Abraham a righteous man. Mm -hmm. Abraham didn't have the law, but yet he was a righteous man. Right. Okay? So I got a scripture for you, right? Watch this, because this scripture is going to help you to understand it. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 1 and read verse 9 and 10. <clears throat> First Ch Timothy chapter one, verses nine through ten. Mm -hmm. Verses nine and ten reads as follows: Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the wicked and disobedient, oh. for the unholy and for sinners, for them without Yahuwah are profane. For murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Okay, so wait a minute. He just said that the law was not made for a righteous man. So Abraham didn't need the law because he was a righteous man. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't made for him. Y'all brought the law down for the wickedness, mm. the lawlessness that was going on in the earth. Mm. Okay? Yes. So pay attention because I want you to understand this. So <clears throat> when these spirits, these angels that came down, the scripture called them sons of God, they, they were angels. If you look it up in other passages, it talks about the sons of God shouting for joy in heavens 
that's talking about the angels, okay? Uh, Job talked about that. These are angels. And these angels, when they came together with these women, they born of themselves a hybrid human, <laughs> which were giants in the land, right? Mm -hmm. So now, what's amazing mm -hmm. is the book of Enoch takes up from this point and talks a little more details about this. This is why we're going to come from the book of Enoch today. And so it's important that you understand what happened with this lawlessness because these spirits, these angels, they brought a wickedness to mankind that was so something that man hadn't seen. Yeah. And they brought it in because these angels took on the form of men mm -hmm. and they made it with these women and brought forth these huge giants. It's sort of like mm -hmm. when you put together a tiger and a lion and you get a liger. They're much bigger mm -hmm. than the the lion and the tiger. Much bigger. Mm -hmm. Some of my giant size, you know, almost mm -hmm. twice the size, right? Mm -hmm. That's what was going on. So you're going to see what was this tampering with man, what it did, right? So now let's go to the book of Enoch. Mm -hmm. And in some books mm -hmm. it may be chapter 6. And in others, it may be chapter 7. If you're reading from the Sefer, it's going to be chapter 7. Okay? So let's go ahead and read this now. So the book of Enoch, um, in the Sefer chapter 7, um, it happened after the sons of men had multiplied in those days that daughters were born to them, elegant and beautiful. And when the watchers, mm -hmm. the sons of heaven, beheld them, they became enamored of them, saying to each other, Come, let us select for ourselves women from the progeny of men, and let us beget children. Then their leader, Shemyaza, said to them, I fear that you may perhaps be indisposed to the performance of this enterprise and that I alone shall suffer for so grievous a crime. But they answered him and said, we all swear and bind ourselves by mutual execrations that we will not change our intention, but execute our projected undertaking. Then they swore all together and all bound themselves by mutual execrations, mm -hmm. their whole number was 200 and descended upon Ardis, which is the top of Mount Sherman. Or Mount Her 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 Herban. That mountain, therefore, was called Sherman because they had sworn upon it and bound themselves by mutual execrations. These are the names of their chiefs, Shemyaza, who was their leader. Arak Baramel, Akibael, Tamiel, Ramiel, Danel, Ezekiel, Sarakniel, Azel, Armors, Batriel, Anain, Zabi, Samelvel, Ertel, Torel, Tamiel, Arazel. These were the prefects of the 200 angels and the remainder were all with them. Okay. Now let's stop there for a minute. Okay. So I want you to understand what's going on. When you see that name, that E-L on the end of their names. Okay. These were mighty ones. That's what that L means. That's why Daniel's name, Daniel was given praise to the most high mighty one. Right. Mm -hmm. and, um, and Ezekiel and all of these names, they had the L on the end. If notice, um, Raphael, a lot of the angels, they had this L on the end of their names. Raphael, um, uh, Michael, right? Yeah. Uh, Gabriel, all of these had the E-L on the end of their names. Yeah, some say that that L represents God in, in layman's terms. Right, exactly. Okay? But it's, you know, of course, we don't refer to him as God. Right, and if we do refer to him as God, it's because of who we, we deal with people that don't understand what right. we're saying. absolutely. And we will usually say the most high God. Mm -hmm. But most of you know, if I ever say God, you know what I'm talking about, the most high, Elohim, yes. right? So yeah, notice that L is at the beginning of Elohim as that's well. That's right, Elohim, mm -hmm. that's right. Yes. So pay attention to what we're saying and, and understand where we're coming from, okay? So now, 
you had all of these different angels who came together and they and they, they with like a pact. They said, we're going to bind ourselves to this covenant and we're going to all stick to it. You know, there's mutual imprecations, no, imprecations. Uh, we're going to do this thing and we're going to um, swear by this mountain that we're going to stick to this thing. So I don't want to be caught in it alone. Y'all going to join me? So they all joined together with this thing, right? And it told you how many angels it was, right? So go ahead, finish reading now. Then they took women, each choosing for himself, whom they began to approach, and with whom they cohabited, teaching them sorcery, incantations, and the dividing of roots and trees. And the women conceiving brought forth Nephilim. Giants, uh huh. And they bore to them three races. First, the great Nephilim, the Nephilim brought forth the, ne the I'm sorry, the Nephilim. The Nephilim brought forth the Nephilim, and the Nephilim brought forth the Eliad. Yes, okay. Now watch and, this. Let's stop there for a minute, okay? Mm -hmm. So pay attention. Listen to this now, okay? So when the scripture says, when you go to Genesis and it tells you how the giants came together, how the, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. the angels came together with the women, and these giants are born, next thing you know, there's wickedness all over the land. He's filling in the gap of what these angels did, right? So now, notice it says here, and all the others took with them, took, and all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, then each one chose himself one. And they, be, and they began to go in unto them and defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments. Wow, witchcraft. Mm -hmm. You see this? Mm -hmm. And the cutting of roots that made mm -hmm. them acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant and they bare great giants whose heights were 3,000 L's, who consumed all the acquisitions of men. And when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured them. My, my version is a little different than y'all, so... And begin to, so the, the giants begin to devour, devour men, right? And they begin to sin against birds, against beasts, against reptiles, fish, to devour one another's fresh flesh, and to drink blood. Now watch this here last part here. Then the earth laid a, 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 a accusation against the lawless ones. Mmm. Notice it says the lawless ones in this passage that I'm reading. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. They came down and they said, we're going to teach them some wickedness, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to teach them how to do these particular things, right? But they didn't just teach them wickedness. They showed them how to invent wicked inventions. The scripture talks about inventors of wicked things, right? Mm -hmm. So now let's go to chapter 8 now. <clears throat> Or chapter mm -hmm. nine in yours. It's chapter eight. Chapter eight, okay. Moreover, Azazel taught men uh, to make swords, yep. knives, shields, breastplates, the fabrication of mirrors, and the workmanship of bracelets and ornaments, the use of paint, the beautifying of the eyebrows, stones of every valuable and select kind, and all sorts of dyes, so that the world became altered, impiety increased, fornication multiplied, and their transgress and they transgressed and corrupted all their ways. Wow. Now let's just stop there for a minute. Are you hearing this? This came from the angels, from the fallen angels, right? Mm -hmm. The fallen angels brought in all this wicked stuff and so that fornication could increase. <clears throat> so they came up with these wicked inventions, these wicked things, right? Now watch this. Now some of you women ain't gonna like this, right? But I did a video that talked about um, uh, the devil's fashion industry, and I talked about women's clothing. Did it, Did you know it was a lustful man that came up with the real high heels that women wear, and it was men that came up with the bikini. They came up with all of this stuff. Are you hearing me? Wicked inventions, right? Mm -hmm. Interesting. I wanted to point out something, too, as well. 
Notice how it said uh, the fabrication of mirrors, and then it began to talk about bracelets and ornaments, which are earrings and things of that nature, eyebrows and stones and uh, valuable uh, yep. selected kinds of stones and dyes, right? And it said the world became altered. Um, wow, you hear no this? Notice this, right? So all of these things were made to adorn the flesh. Right. Okay, the dyes were for the clothes and the earrings and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. The eyebrows. They say, hey, we're going to hook them eyebrows up too, right? And of course, the men had their shields and breastplates so they can look manly and strong. Right. Women looked beautiful and all this. What increased after that? After people started doweling up those bodies of theirs. Yeah. Fornication increased, yep. right? So with, right. with the enhancement of beauty yes, and all of this attention paid to how I look today, I'm going to put on yes. my bracelet and my necklace and my earrings and I'm going to paint the face and the eyebrows and I have a mirror so I can behold myself, right? Right. <laughs> right? Because see, everybody else can behold I just realized you. that these did say mirrors in here. Yeah, without the mirror... Wow. Most of us wouldn't know what we look like, right? Only, uh, only I would know what you look like, but you wouldn't know, right? You would have no idea what you look like if it wasn't for mirrors, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> but <laughs> these angels, they help them to fabricate mirrors so that people yes. can be vain. When yep. they look in that mirror and they see themselves, they can say, oh. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Yes. You see how the Book of Enoch is opening this thing up and letting you see this is why fornication increased throughout the land? Mm -hmm. Wow. So imagine if a person can look in the mirror and determine, oh, I'm a, I'm a handsome fellow or I'm a beautiful woman, right? If you can look in the mirror and you can see that, so then all, all of a sudden, then your ways, notice it says it um, altered. There's a part in here that says um, it corrupted their ways. And um, the world became altered. So that means because of the increase of all these spirits, the injection of all these spirits into mankind, it also entered their minds. So when, the, when people's minds became altered, that's when the world became altered. Because before then, people probably weren't into their looks because they had no idea what they looked like. Only people beholding them knew. So uh, it wasn't a lot of focus uh, put on that, right? But because people began to beautify themselves and pay more attention to those things, not only did it alter their looks, but it altered the course of the world. It increased the activity of lawlessness. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we see in the book of Enoch how it definitely... Um, um, how these angels brought a lot of wickedness in the world, you know, and <clears throat> through their things that they knew, that they understood. That's what's funny that an angel knew this. Mm -hmm. So an angel's probably sitting back saying, I know if I did this here and I did this, I could make you look like this, make you look like this. And they were, man, that is some crazy stuff when you think about it. Also, when you think about this too, uh, notice the angels. They they picked wives, right? Yeah. And so this is probably what they wanted their wives to look like. So they yeah. said, look, I'm going to teach her how to put some makeup on and get yeah. herself all pretty for me. Because notice, they came to these women and made wives and made children. And so they, too, wanted these women to look this certain way. Right. And so that same spirit wow. um, was, like you pointed out, that it was a man who invented the high heel. Right. So the spirit of those angels was in that man's mind. He said, this is, I want them to, that leg to be arched up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's going to change the walk a little bit, mm -hmm. you know? So think about yeah. it. These angels injected a lot of their spirits into the minds of people. Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is really amazing. And also the fact that they had children, the DNA of those angels had to be in those children. That's right. That's, mm -hmm. something, that's something else when you yeah. think about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now, I'm going to read this part here. This, uh, Semajaza taught enchantments and root cutting. Uh, Am Amaros, the resolving of enchantments. And Barajaja, Jajel, taught astrology. And Kobabel, uh, the constellations. And Ezekiel, the knowledge of the clouds. So they were teaching everything when mm -hmm. you see this, right? And Arakiel, mm -hmm. 
the signs of the earth, and Samizio, the signs of the sun, and Sar Sariel, the course of the moon. And the men, as men perished, they cried, and their cry went up to heaven. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So you see, this thing is really amazing when you look at this and you see how this wickedness came in from an outside source, right? I right. notice how I was talking about all these things that th these different um, entities yeah. um, brought forth. But it said, and men begin, uh, mine says, and men being destroyed cried out and their voices reached heaven. So um, after yeah. these angels introduced all of this stuff to mankind, it started changing and altering the world. And so it must have brought some type of suffering because it says, and men being destroyed. So they were being destroyed by these wicked inventions. And what mm -hmm. did they do? Like they began to cry out. Yeah. Their voices reached unto heaven because whatever these entities, these angels did, alter the earth and men began to suffer because of it. Wow. Now watch this, right? One of the things he said they created was what? Swords mm -hmm. and weapons. Mm -hmm. Think about that, right? I remember when they created gunpowder, when I did research on it, and they created gunpowder. Mm -hmm. When they made that gunpowder, they went out my, out their mind when they made the gun. Yeah. They went out their mind. That's why you got guns and missiles everywhere. Where do you think all this technology comes from? Let's, let's just be honest. Have you ever really seen a rocket ship, right, or a, or a missile? Do you know the technology they got to go into these big, huge um, um, machines when they launch the, the shuttle? Do you, do you, when you look at all of that intricate stuff, how in the world can a man's mind even tap into this type of technology? It can't. It can't. They have to get this stuff from these fallen angels. See, yeah. that's what CERN is about, right? Mm -hmm. They send these particles into another dimension. They come back with information on them. Mm -hmm. This is what this whole thing is about, right? Mm -hmm. This is where they're getting this stuff from. They're getting this stuff from demons, right? Mm -hmm. We said this in the, in, the, um, in the series that we did. It was called, uh, what's that series? Um... We talked about the Book of Enoch and... White It Out? No, no. Yeah, it was the White, White Out 6 series mm -hmm. where we talked about the Book of Enoch and how they, um, how all these this stuff came about on the, on the, um, the robots and the androids and how they're trying to mingle this thing, right? The AI intelligence. That's because they, they are getting a lot of this information from these angels, these fallen angels. Mm -hmm. You know, how in the world can a person that's out of nowhere figure out how to do all of this stuff? You understand what I'm saying? I remember in one of our um, documentaries, um, well, actually it was in the um, Megiddo New Age, and um, they were talking about these two sisters who weren't too right. bright. They only mm -hmm. had maybe a, was it a third grade education? Mm -hmm. um, they weren't too bright, but somehow right. they began to hear from demons, Yep. right? And so these demons taught them some very significant wicked things. Yeah. And they they made a, a they made the point of trying to explain to them, <laughs> you know, yep. to explain to us that were watching the documentary that these women weren't smart. They yeah. they didn't have a college education. This was back in the what 1800s That's was right. it? They didn't have a college education. They weren't bright. They were in some little town somewhere, you know, no access to education, but through the information that these yeah. demons gave them, they put some wicked doctrines into the earth. Matter of fact, the one, there was another lady too that was in that documentary. They said she actually wrote this book. Yeah. And they say scholars to this day are reading this book and they say, how in the world did this lady, but this lady admitted that she was getting this information from, from demons. demons. Exactly. Right. So let's keep that in mind and understand that's what's been going on. People are getting information from demons, just like the the, the Scott, the, those two sisters. What were they called? What were they called? They're not Scott sisters. They were called um the um. I don't remember those their two names. sisters. But anyway, I can't think of their names. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they kept saying that they were getting information from this entity, right? And they actually Mr. was Split Foot. Mister Split Foot. <laughs> mm -hmm. You get it, Split Foot. Mm -hmm. Baffle Baffle Matt. Matt. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. Yes. And so this stuff is creepy. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it's creepy, right? When I get a chance, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to just say this, right? I got a video mm -hmm. that we're going to put up. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, we can't put it up on, on this, on YouTube. Nope. We got to put it up somewhere else, but it's about a possession. It's showing this man that's possessed with demons. He's, his body actually contorts just like a two legged goat. Mm hmm. And he's walking around, and he actually tells him that it's he's Lucifer. Mm -hmm. 
And when you see this, you're gonna know this thing is for this stuff is for real. These demons. So there's an effort, you all. You have to understand. This is why I'm constantly quoting that scripture: "Be not ignorant of Satan's devices. Don't be ignorant of his devices. Meaning, don't ignore his mm -hmm. devices. Right? Don't ignore what's out there. But they're constantly trying to use music, media, yes. television, movies. They're using books, whatever they can to try to downplay the spirit realm. Right? Yes. They, but see, what's amazing about this, think about how this world is. Yes. They will use the powers of darkness constantly. <clears throat> yeah. Spells and sorcery, casting of um, voodoo and witchcraft, all kinds of things. But then when it comes to the power of the most high, the power of God, as the world calls him. Yeah. Oh, there's no such thing. No such thing. Oh, why, why are we even talking about that? There, there's no power of God. The power's within you. I mean, you know, they will try to downplay yes. the power of the most high while at the same time uplifting the power of Hashitan, the That's devil. Right. They put it in the movies. Uh, they put it in um, documentaries. They put it in uh, television series. Right. They got these little witch shows that came out some uh, years ago. Um, that were appealing to children. Right. The the teenage witch. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Able to do all kinds I remember of that. things. Sabrina the teenage witch. Yeah. Right. So they glorify it through yeah. Hollywood and, um, and media. That's right. While at the same time trying to make you um, look the other way as it relates to the power of the Most High. Remember Bewitched? Yes. That was another one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Remember I Dream of Genie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. These are all shows came out in the seventies, right? Right. Late 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. and so, the bottom line, now watch this, right? Here's another one. I want you to think about this, right? Charm. So Someone person, said charm. Yeah, TNT. exactly. Yes. So, mm -hmm. a person will say, well, these giants, I come we're not seeing any bones of these giants and all this kind of stuff. Watch this, though, right? I'm going to tell you something that happened. This actually happened in history. They actually had a 13-foot skeleton of a woman mm -hmm. that they used to show in a parade. You can find this image on the internet if it's still there because... I got a theory that they're actually erasing these images and all of this kind of mm. stuff because they they don't want you to, to see the proof that there were actually giants in the land. But watch this, right? Watch this. That 13-foot skeleton that they had in this, it was in a, um, um, a circus, carnival of some sort, right? That they were showing, a dispute came up to who was the actual owner of it. And they went to court about this thing, right? And the guy who won in the court took the skeleton and vanished. Now, why wouldn't you want to show that thing? You got this 13, you can make millions of dollars showing this 13-foot statue, right? This 13-foot skeleton, should I say. But he took it and he vanished. He said, after that, no one's seen the thing anymore. Mm -hmm. That's because these demons are doing this, controlling these people. No, no, we don't, we don't want this stuff seen because it'll be proof that we actually, this actually did come about. And then another thing that happens, too, is um, they do unearth giant's bones from time to time, right? But you had some people who set out to put a few little scams out there, mm -hmm. alter some images and stuff, so they can say, oh, this one was fake, right? Yep. And so some people get in their mind, oh, that stuff isn't real. They said yeah. that was fake, right? But there are some actual bones of giants yeah. and dinosaurs, right? Yeah. But, uh, which one of y'all said something to me about dinosaurs recently? Was it you? Earlier today, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, there are actual bones of dinosaurs and yeah. giants. This stuff did exist, right? Yeah. And um, right now today, they <clears throat> want to uh, turn your minds or uh, keep you from thinking about anything that's yeah. um, um, supernatural. Yeah. Right? They only want you to stay. This is why when they say, um, they talk about flat earth, I say, yeah, the earth is flat in this sense. People's um, knowledge has been flatlined. You know, <laughs> people have a dead sense of reality as it relates to the Most mm -hmm. High. That's that's the way I view it, right? Yeah. Because again, when you talk about the power of the Most High, everybody um, is either afraid of it or don't want to yeah. deal with it. But the same people that are afraid of it will tap into something dark, will let something dark whisper into their ear and have them do something, <clears throat> right? This is why when it says the earth was altered, that's, that kind of trips me out to hear that mm -hmm. because you can see that there was a time where things, there were things happening, 
but not like it is today. And the scripture also also tells us that evil men will wax worse, worse and worse, and worse. <clears throat> and so we see things going from bad to worse yes. because of the increase of demonic activity. Wow, lawlessness, lawlessness in the land, mm -hmm. increase of lawlessness. That's why the scripture called the Antichrist what the lawless, the lawless one. one, and that's a man mm -hmm. of sin. Mm -hmm. Wow. So now let's think about this, right? So <clears throat> now we see all this stuff going on, right? I remember they found, they do have on, in display a bone that's about this big, right? It's about, it's, 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 I forget how big they said the bone was. Was it but six inches? I think it's about six inches. But they said this bone was actually the middle finger of a woman, like this, this part of the bone of, of a person. That part there. But it was six inches the long. They said based on the size of that hand, that hand, they said that person, that woman would have had to been 36 feet tall. They still have this bone. 36 feet tall. Mm. <laughs> That's crazy. Can you imagine sitting back looking at this big 30 foot six tall woman just walking up in the trees and stuff, just walking? What do you do if she get hungry? <laughs> you, <laughs> you run. You can't even run. You can't run. Because <laughs> that's what they begin to eat the people. Right. Man, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. And it sounds very crazy because we've seen a lot of movies. We've seen a lot of fictional stuff. And we say, no, this stuff can't be real. Let me tell you something, right? When you see all these fairy tales that they came out with, I guarantee you there's an element of truth to these fairy tales. When they show you the big trolls under the bridge, they were giants, these trolls. Look like beasts. A lot of that stuff was real. The scripture even talks about, matter of fact, there's a lost book called the Book of Giants. Mm -hmm. When you read the Book of Giants, it says there were even monsters on the land. We're not talking about animals. We're talking about monsters. It said there were monsters in the Book of Giants, right? Okay, so I wanted to point out something that uh, Brother Set Apart put in here. Um, he said, um, even in the scripture, they, they went and they said it was giants in the land. They said we were like grasshoppers. That's today. right. Yeah. Wow. Now watch this. Mm -hmm. Grasshoppers. We were like grasshoppers? Wait a minute. <laughs> wait, wait a minute, right? If a man is 12 feet tall and I'm looking up at him, I'm not going to think of myself as a grasshopper. I may say, oh, man, I was kind of like a um, like a dog to him, you know? <laughs> I'm not going to say grasshopper. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? They said we're like grasshoppers to them. Can you imagine a grasshopper? A grasshopper is this small if I stand up. Mm -hmm. The biggest grasshopper is about like this, right? Mm -hmm. So you mean, Tim, they were looking at They said, they like grass. We like grasshoppers to them. Mm -hmm. Think about that, right? So they were <laughs> trying to give us a clue that there were some huge humans or yes. not humans. Huge, not exactly. humans in the land. That's you right. See. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you notice why it's right, like this, right? So when... When David finally came around, he fought Goliath. Goliath was probably only about 10 feet tall. He was considered a giant, right? Mm -hmm. But notice, a lot of the giants had already been killed off in the land. So so that's why when they saw Goliath, they were like, ooh, because by that time, a lot of them had already been killed, except for Anakin. He was pretty huge, too. Um, Anak, what was his name? What was his, oh, no. Um, the one whose bed was really big and made of iron. Um, Og, I think was his name. O.G. Uh, but again, mm -hmm. this stuff is in the scriptures, y'all. Mm -hmm. It's actually in the word. Mm -hmm. So we got to think about this thing, right? Ah, uh, this sounds like some, a crazy giant, don't it? I kind of feel like the Most High leaves himself a witness to. He does, yeah. Um, I talked about um, how there are certain um, birds that can talk, right? Yeah. Um, to me, that's evident that the animals did used to speak. I mean, yes. we see evidence in scripture that they used to speak. When the donkey sp finally spoke to the man, he said, stop yeah. hitting me. Okay, can you stop hitting me? Yep. There's something blocking the road, right? <laughs> yeah. But so the Most High, to leave himself a witness, he have birds that do talk and have exactly. conversations, right? Exactly. And so I even believe that um, in the land today, from time to time, we will see giants born, right? Y'all remember that one giant baby is, is on um, the channel here. There was a huge baby born, okay? And it was, the head was huge. That baby was right? huge. And then from time to time, you'll see um, yeah, you'll that. see people that are giants, right? Yeah. Remember the woman who um, went in the woods and said something got at her a, a few times, and then she ended <laughs> up having, she ended up having this big tall thing that was walking. 
we can't even find that video on online anymore. That's what I say. They, they, it's really a trip, mm-hmm. but it has been there for years. Then all of a sudden, we can't find it. Can't find it. You know, we're going to keep looking. But, you know, they yeah. have been um, scrubbing the web of some things. Yeah, they've been scrubbing the web of, of a lot of things. That's why that video of that demon, that, that man possessed, I saved it. Mm-hmm. I got that video some eight, nine years ago. And I said, I'm going to say this. I knew they were going to take that video down. It's horrible. It's actually horrible. There was another one I saw that was strange. I should have recorded that. I should have got that one too. But um, it was in a mm-hmm. mental institution back in the 20s or 30s when they had the black and white film. And what I seen happen in that mental institution, you know there was spirits, portergeist and things in this room. It was crazy. It was that crazy. There were things happening that was impossible to happen. You know, but anyway, of course, they will, they will try to, you know, give a medical explanation for a right. lot of this stuff. Um, scientists will say this or doctors will say yes. uh, something else because they don't want you to look at the spiritual. That's right. That's why in the last days we talked about this last week, I believe it was that they failed to give you the glory. Yes. They don't want to give you the glory for the things that are going to happen. Yes. In the world. So they will give the glory to science yes. or medicine or something like that because they don't want to give the um, the glory to the Most High. Yes, exactly. Wow. Well, I'm going to start reading this chapter 9 here. And this is what it says. This is, is it going to get deep now. Pay attention. It says, and then Michael, Uriel, and um, Raphael and Gabriel looked down from heaven and saw much blood shed upon the earth. And all lawlessness being wrought upon the earth. You hear that? All this lawlessness being wrought upon the earth. And they said one to another, The earth made without inhabitant cries the voice of their cries up to the gates of heaven. And now to you, the holy ones of heaven, the souls of men make their suit, saying, Bring our cause before the Most High. And they said unto Yahuwah of the ages, Yahuwah, uh, uh, master of masters, God of gods, king of kings, the, and God of the ages, the throne of thy glory standeth unto all the generations of ages, and thy holy name and glorious and blessed unto all the ages. Okay, I'll let you read from here. Thou hast made all things. What verse is that? I wasn't following. Verse 4. You have made all things. You possess power over all things. And all things are open and manifest before you. You behold all things and nothing can be concealed from you. You have seen what Azazel has done. How he has taught every species of iniquity upon earth. And has disclosed to the world all the secret things which are done in the heavens? Mm. Shemyaza also has taught sorcery to whom you have given authority over those who are associated with him. I think it's kind of curious when it says um, secret things that are um, done in heaven. Mm-hmm. So it's it makes true. you wonder what's going on up in the heavens. Yeah. <laughs> you know that mm-hmm. this is knowledge he decided to bring down to mankind. Mm-hmm. So it's like the flesh of man can't handle this knowledge. And because I can't imagine right. that um, this knowledge that was shared that came down from heaven. I can't imagine they were doing wicked things in heaven with it. Right. But it's like when you bring it and you um, mix it with right. the thoughts of flesh and bone, right. humans, it brought forth something evil, right? Right. Just like um, it brought forth giants initially, it seems like it, it even brought something, uh, an increase in immorality, um, mm-hmm. just wickedness in the earth by giving men the knowledge that was only supposed to be in heaven. Now watch this here. It knows it says sorcery, right? Mm-hmm. Now watch this. You remember when Yah blessed Moses? Mm-hmm. And Moses and Aaron, they eat the stick down and turn into a snake, right? Mm-hmm. And then Pharaoh was like, oh, we well, can do that. <laughs> <laughs> right? He went and got two of them, threw them down too. They turned into snakes. Mm-hmm. So they had learned this sorcery, mm-hmm. which was something that Moses was able to do. They, they, they That's why they probably viewed a lot of people like that. They, If you look in, the, if you look in 
the on the on the Google and you do a lot of research, right? And you look up a sorcerer, right? And you look at some of the image they're gonna portray. You're gonna see a, a a lot of images of a guy that may have a bald head with a long beard and some type of uh, cape on, sort of like what I had, had on earlier, right? A warlock, <laughs> right? But guess what? That's also how Elijah look, looked. He was bald headed with a beard with a cloak on. A lot of the um, patriots of, of old had cloaks and was probably looking the same way with the long beard carrying the staff. You see how they a wizard coined the image. And made it wizardry, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what's going on. You got a lot of this stuff that they're they're they 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 use it for wickedness, right? But um, Elijah was doing all kinds of incredible things. Mm -hmm. Remember when he made the axe head float? The axe head fell in the water. God said, "Oh man, I need that axe head." And Elijah he did something. And the axe head floated up. The axe head floated up to the top of the water. Hmm. You see. And so you got to understand there was a lot of this stuff going on. People was looking at him like, that's that's why they said, Elias said, okay, go, go get your men and y'all pour, y'all do all this, do all this, and we're going to see who's, whose God is the true God, right? Mm -hmm. Because they were, it was a competition. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I want you all to understand something too. Uh, some people get in the mode of thinking where they say, well, I don't believe in all that stuff. It don't matter whether you believe in something or not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So this is why I want to give you sure all enough. some modern day um, occurrences that I know of personally. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is why you have to understand something. This is why the, the enemy wants to promote powers of darkness, but yes. downplay the powers of light, the powers of yes. the most high, because he don't want nobody using the power of light against the power of darkness. Right. I remember back in the day, we know someone who said that their house was haunted. Okay, now these um, occurrences of haunt, haunted houses happen because the people that dwell there don't have the spirit of Yah to combat this stuff. Right. Right. Now, also within that house, um, the young, one of the young men who lived there, they said that he had paranoid schizophrenia. Remember, I told y'all that they mm -hmm. like to assign some type of medical diagnosis or a right. mental, some type of mental disease, mental health issue really is demonic right yeah. but they said he had paranoid schizophrenic schizophrenia they said within their house sometimes they would be so afraid they would be sitting at the table and a cup would just float across the room mm -hmm. they would be terrified a spoon would fly across the room so many people have had these same types of experiences yeah. this this is because the powers of darkness are so heavy in that environment that they can move about freely. Mm -hmm. They move about freely because nobody there has the spirit of Yah. And so these spirits are there to torment the humans, yeah. right? It's there to torment the humans. <clears throat> okay, so a lot of people have had these kinds of experiences. I just wanted to say that yeah. so that those who are saying, well, I don't believe in that stuff. That stuff isn't real. This stuff don't happen. Ask somebody who's experienced it, yeah. right? Ask someone who has been visited by these spirits and see what they tell <laughs> you, right? <laughs> this stuff is real. And our believing or not believing in it does not change the way they move or act. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this story. I've told it before, but I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you this story. But <laughs> I knew someone who um, was... It got a hold of some witchcraft books, mm -hmm. okay? And up in their room, they decided they they going to they painted the ceiling black and put stars on it, painted the walls dark, painted dark in the window and everything, and they were lighting candles and, and reading these witchcraft books and all this stuff, right? So one day, a spirit visited the person, mm -hmm. scared them like crazy. Mm-hmm. They didn't even want to go back up to that room. They mm -hmm. kept away from the room because the spirit had them that scared. Mm -hmm. Interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. See, this stuff is real. You can't, yes. you can't call on those guys. Devil, where you at? If you real, where you at? And then when he show up, then you run and scared. Well, what you calling for? What you calling on? You show up and be like, I'm here, I am. <laughs> right in your face. Yeah, you called me, right? And you know what you going to do? <laughs> right? <laughs> he right there and you the calling. Right? What you calling for? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't 
don't don't mess around with the powers of darkness don't mess if you around don't, with that especially stuff. not knowing the consequences. That's right. A lot of these celebrities have talked about their encounters. Yeah. This is why some of them are not wrapped too tight, right? That's right. Some of them want out but they can't get out. Because That's they right. done open up that big open giant that door. door. Yep. Right? They've opened up that door and it's hard to close it now. It's too much stuff blocking the door. Yeah. And those demons, once you let them in, you think they're going to just, when you tell them, um, can you please just leave now? I'm afraid. Do you think? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm in here now. They're going to come in, put their feet all up on, on your table, yeah. and sit there and look right at you and be like, okay, I'm about to call some stuff up in here. And you, you didn't invite in them in. Now, remember that one passage that says something about the man who had his house swept clean. But he didn't get the the um, he get didn't get the the understanding of things or whatever. Yeah. And then the demons that left, they actually came back with seven more demons. Yeah, came back with seven right. More so demons. again, <clears throat> you don't want to mess around with the powers of darkness. No, you want to mess right? around because once you open that door, they're gonna go get more. Yep. Right to um, reestablish that stronghold stronger. That's right. Interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very interesting. So. The bottom line is, um, you want to keep away from all that wicked stuff. Mm -hmm. I had a friend of mine years ago. I remember he, um, this is when we were teenagers. He said, hey, man, I got a Ouija board, you know? And he pulled that thing, and I was sitting there like, mm. I wasn't about, <laughs> I was probably about 14 years old, 13, 14. I'm looking at that boy. He said, come on, man, let's put our hands on. Let's try to make something happen. I'm sitting up there like, I said, man, uh, I, don't, I, I just played off. I, I, my mind, I was like, I'm scared of this thing. But I was like, but I was like, <laughs> Man, I don't believe in that stuff. Man, you, man, it's just a stupid board in the game. So mm -hmm. I just you know, I got, got up out of there. I'm like, I didn't do that witchcraft stuff in here. I was up out of there. You know this what I'm saying? This is the kind of stuff you went to do. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to talk no more. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but people be dabbing into some crazy mm -hmm. stuff. I'm telling you, people, and that rock and roll music, when it first came out in the 70s, I had friends that were into that stuff. Some mm -hmm. of that stuff is so wicked mm -hmm. until it's crazy wicked. You understand me? Mm. Crazy wicked. Where they're actually summon, summoning demons. There was a group called Judas Priest. Mm, mm, mm. Judas Priest? Deaf Leopard? This is the names of this stuff. Motley Crew? Right? I ain't said I used to listen to a lot of this stuff back in the days. That's how I know about it, you know? But then I began to see all this crazy stuff dealing with me. I said, you know what? This stuff is getting crazy. Mm -hmm. And leave this stuff alone, you know? And so the bottom line is, they put this stuff in the music, and people, they get into this stuff so heavy, and these demons come and get them. See, the problem is, most people that's out there, they don't just sit back and listen to that music. What else do they do, y'all? Huh? Huh? They're smoking weed and they drinking, right? And they're getting high and they listen to this crazy music. So what do you think is happening to them when they're smoking weed and getting high and they listen to this crazy music? What do you think is happening? The environment changes <laughs> and so, those demons... Uh, opening door in their, in their head and in their soul. Okay. Remember how the scripture says, yes. Yah inhabits the praises of his people? Well, who do you think inhabits the praises of Satan? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's going to send forth his spirits in there too. That's right. Hey, you praising they... Satan with yeah. your actions, he inhabits those yeah. too. Yeah, you play that stuff. They go, That's, hey, hey y'all, call the card over here, right? That's just how it is, right? Mm -hmm. So, hey, let's go to, yeah, somebody said Ozzy Osbourne was crazy. And they got a bit the bat head off on stage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. They're opening up portals. This is exactly what's happening. That's and right. so uh, sometimes when people don't know or understand why certain things are um, in their lives um, in the present day, look back and see. And look, someone said Black Sabbath. That sound dark, don't it? <laughs> yeah, Black Sabbath, they hit the song out. Is he alive or dead? Someone said he had been risen from the grave. He's talking about the Messiah, and that's something. Mm -hmm. Is he alive or dead? I remember the song, and the, the, the song sounds so wicked. When you hear it, it's like, what is that? You know, and they're singing it like this. It's like, ooh, man. There's a group out called Spooky Tooth. On the album cover, there was an image of a hammer hitting the back of somebody's head, pushing a nail through the head. And they were screaming like, I'm a hammer. 
That was on the cover. <laughs> mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? This is some wicked stuff, right? And uh, there was another album by um, uh, Led Zeppelin where they had these odd-looking white children with blonde hair all laid across this little mountainside. I said, man, that looks like Fallen Angel stuff. Mm-hmm. That's what it looks like on the album. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Okay, let's go back to the scriptures here. Let's go to, we're reading at verse 10, chapter 10. Chapter 10, okay. Did I finish the other one? Wait a minute, let's see. I'll pick back up at um, chapter 9, verse 5. Okay. You have seen what Azazel has done, how he has taught every species of iniquity upon earth and has disclosed to the world all the secret things which are done in the heavens. Shemyaza also has taught sorcery to whom you have given authority over those who were associated with him. They have gone together to the daughters of men and lain with them and have become polluted Mm -hmm. and have revealed their sins to them. The women likewise have brought forth Nathalem, Giants. Uh, thus has the whole world been filled with blood and with iniquity. And righteousness. And now behold, the souls <laughs> of those who are dead cry out and complain even to the gate of heaven. Their groaning ascends, nor can they escape from the unrighteousness which is committed on earth. Mm-hmm. You know all things before they exist. You know these things and what has been done by them yet you do not speak to us what on account of these things are we to do to them mm, mm, mm. so it said the earth was polluted polluted wow you know the whole earth is to this day polluted, polluted everything to this even day. the animals yep mm, yep mm, mm. and they digging in the earth trying to get this oil out and all this stuff is causing the the, the plant to do all kinds of things you know mm. they're getting all these minerals and making all these kind of gadgets and things you know it's crazy, right? And then they make all this plastic and got nowhere to put it. Can't burn it. Mm-hmm. And so it just ends up in the ocean. Huge landfills and nothing but plastic mm-hmm. because they can't do nothing with it. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Chapter 10. It says, Then said the Most High, the Holy and Great One speak, spake, and sent Uriel to the son of Lamech and said to him, Go to Noah and tell him, in my name, hide thyself and reveal to him the end that is approaching, that the whole earth will be destroyed. A deluge is about to come upon the whole earth and will destroy all that is on it. So that had to be some wickedness for the whole earth to get covered like that. It never will. Y'all, y'all look down and say, you know what? It's only one family I, I can even I, I can even say right here. And that's Noah and his family. That's it. Then it says, And now instruct him that he may escape, and his seed may be preserved for all the generations of the world. And again, Yahuwah said unto Raphael, By Azazel, hand and foot, and cast him into darkness, and make an opening in the desert, which is... In the dale, and cast him therein, and place him rough and jagged rocks, and place upon him rough and jagged rocks, and cover him with darkness, and let him abide there forever, and cover his face that he may not see light. And on the day of the great judgment, he shall be cast into fire, and heal the earth which the angels have corrupted. Mm, mm, And you hear this? Mm -hmm. And proclaim the healing of the earth, that they may heal the plague, and that all the children of men may not perish, though all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. I want to make a point about something. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it, he just said the angels have corrupted the earth, right? The angels have corrupted the earth. So what has the enemy done 
Um, he used the movies again yep. to make you think of angels only in one light. Yeah. Okay. When you think of angels, most people think of the um, the wings on the back and the halo and glowing bodies and just something bright and beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. Now this scripture says that the angels corrupted the earth. So man in his earthly wisdom, right? His earthly wisdom, the wisdom of this world is foolishness to Yah, but the yeah. man in his earthly <clears throat> wisdom, he said, I'm gonna show you all the angels the way we see them. They see them as these, these white beings with um, curly hair, um, wings on the back and all of this, right? But the angels can be um, evil as well. That's why the scripture in the New Testament, it says, be careful how you entertain strangers. Yeah. Because some have entertained angels unawares. Yeah. So what does that tell you? That tells you that in today's time, angels can still That's right. manifest themselves to humans. Why on earth would the Bible tell us to be careful how we entertain strangers? Hmm? Yeah. Because some unknowingly have entertained angels. That's right. Now, with that bit of information in mind, if it's saying be careful, it's letting you know most, most times you're not going to be visited by one of those good angels. Yeah. If you are visited by an angel, nine times out of ten, it's going to be a corrupt angel. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, remember Jay-Z Knight. She said an angel stood in her kitchen. Yeah. Right? And um, she said, she bright, said beautiful. wow, you're beautiful. Mm -hmm. Y'all can look up Jay-Z Knight, y'all. She's a woman who's tapped into some powers, yeah. some dark powers. And um, she actually asked the, the angel, are you a demon? And, he's like, no, and he I'm says, not. no, I'm not a demon. <laughs> she was having a conversation <clears throat> yep. with this entity. Understand, people, that this stuff that you all think is only in Hollywood, yeah. you think is only in the movies. No, it is not. Okay? This is why I continue to say, be not ignorant of Satan's devices. Yeah. Because the devil, like a roaring lion, goes about seeking whom he has permission to devour. Uh, watch this, right? What do you think about the statement that Paul made? He said... But though we or an angel preach unto you any other doctrine mm -hmm. that you have received, let him be accursed. Mm. Mm -hmm. Paul was telling you right there that if we come to you or even an angel even from an angel. heaven mm -hmm. preach to you any other doctrine, that's a wicked angel. He said, let him be accursed. Mm. Wow. Come on now. Are you hearing that? That means they can still do that. They can still come and preach another doctrine. What do you think these doctrines of devils come from? Scripture says seducing spirit. In the last days, yeah. there is going to be an increase in seducing spirits and doctrines, doctrines of, of devils. devils. Right. Mm -hmm. And so just like we're talking about the increase of lawlessness in the world, mm -hmm. now we're seeing an, an increase. Because when Moses' time came, they were wiped off the earth, right? Mm -hmm. But why is it we see giants in David's time, in Joshua's time? Here, here, the earth was already swept of everything, and here these giants are popping up again. Did you think about that, right? Mm -hmm. So Yah then killed all the giants off the earth, and then years later, here you got Joshua and them spying out the land, and what do they see in the land? Giants. Mm -hmm. Yes. That means these angels were still doing this thing. Yes. That's right. Now, so, of course, we don't. I don't want to get too much into this, but... Right. Um, the incubus and the succubus. These are entities. Yeah. These are Demons. spirits that still deal with mankind. Okay. Some of you are familiar with the incubus yes. and succubus spirits. And a lot of people have talked about how they've become very, very sick afterward. Right. Yeah. So understand that these spirits, these demons, these angels, see, it's not just one thing, y'all. Spirits, demons, angels. The devil himself, mm -hmm. right? It's a lot of darkness out here. It's a lot of... It's a lot of darkness. That's why mm -hmm. when, you, when you hear the story of the uh, five wise and the five foolish, it says when the son of man came back, when the bridegroom came back, it was midnight. Mm -hmm. It was dark. Yeah. Right? That midnight represents darkness. Darkness, yeah. Right? And so we have got to make sure that we are the children of the light, mm -hmm. that we are reflecting light into the world. Mm-hmm. 
Wow. Mm -hmm. I tell you, this thing is something else, y'all, all the stuff that's going on. If you can see out here in the spirit realm, mm -hmm. you have so much wicked stuff going on until it ain't funny. Mm -hmm. That's why people got to get a hold of their minds. You got to get a hold of your spirit and your soul. Get a hold of your, your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Because these demons are running wild, putting thoughts into people's minds, using music and using other things. It says, and the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel mm -hmm. to him ascribe all sin. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get back. Someone just said something about DNA. Um, okay, uh, Kimmy. Be not ignorant of Satan's devices. What mm -hmm. are they up to, y'all? Come on now. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing out here innocent. Right. Many times when you have certain things that take, because back in the day, um, you didn't have all these companies saying, hey, we'll, we'll find out where you're, you're located from. We'll, we'll see what part of the world you come mm -hmm. from. Let us, let us send in this, some samples of your blood, okay? Think about it. Send in some samples of your blood. Mm -hmm. And I hear there's, and I'm not going to say who they are, okay? But I hear there's a certain group of people who don't allow their blood to get no DNA. <laughs> Anybody know who I'm talking about? <laughs> They wear hats similar to the one you have on, young lady. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they don't allow themselves to be. But everybody else on the planet is sending in samples of they, they tissue and they blood and all this kind of stuff. So they can mm -hmm. see. So the people can tell you uh, what part <clears throat> of the world. You, what do you think that you think that's all they doing with your DNA? Hmm? Mm. I haven't sent none in and I don't plan on doing it. Right. Now, I do have some family who have sent some in, and of course it shows um, that we're from areas in Senegal, Africa, and, you know, areas like that. But me, I'm not sending nothing in. You ain't attaching my name and my nothing to nothing, right? Yeah. When it's all said and done, when it's time for the Father to call me home, that's, that's going to be it, right? Yeah. But ain't going to be nothing floating out in space, so nobody can do nothing with it. But see you see how they presented it, though. Right. Oh, here, just send, just pay us a little bit of money. We'll tell you if your folks are from Europe or, or if they're from Africa or what part of Africa they're from or if they're from the Yugoslavia. We'll tell you where they're from. Exactly. Well, and this folks is a, fall for it every time. But anyway, go yeah. ahead, baby. This is a walk of faith, y'all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, you can, if you think that your DNA is going to prove that you're Yah's child and you're going to make it into the kingdom, then you have fallen short by a long ways. Right. You know? Okay, back to the scripture here. It says, And to, a, a Gab and to, and to Gabriel said, Yahuwah, Proceed against the bastards and the reprobates and against the children of fornication. And destroy the children of fornication, the children of the watchers from amongst men, and cause them to go forth and send them one against another, that they may destroy each other in battle. For length of days shall they not have. Now, I don't know if you remember this, right? I talked about this before, too. Um, I don't know if you remember this, but uh, remember the movies Conan the Barbarian? Those movies came out years ago. Arnold Schwarzenegger playing as Conan, right? In one episode, they had Will Chamberlain come in there, who was 7'4". You know, he comes in there. They were supposed to be representing the Giants. This period, they call him Conan the Sumerian. If you do your history and you look at the time frame that this was, this was during the time frame just before Noah. Interesting, huh? And it lines up perfectly because in the, in the movie of Conan, they were like nomads going, going forth fighting and fighting monsters and demons and fighting each other with swords and everything. That's how it was, right? Conan the Barbarian, right? So they they putting this stuff in the movies, you know? Mm -hmm. It's in the movies, right? Mm -hmm. It says here um, that, one of, that they may destroy one another. And no request that they, their fathers, make of thee shall be granted unto their fathers on their behalf. For they hope in, to live and eternal life, and that each one of them will live 500 years. And Yahuwah said unto Michael, Go by Semjaza Sem and his associates, whom have united themselves with women, so as to have defiled themselves with them in all their uncleanness. And with their sons have slain one another. And they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones. Bind them fast for 70 generations 
in the valleys of the earth till the day of their judgment and of their consummation till the judgment that is forever and ever is consumed. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, consummated. Okay, I'm going to let you read 13 on okay. in those days. <clears throat> To this chapter 10, right? Uh, yeah. To Gabriel also, Yahuwah said, oh, go to, well, you said 13 on, huh? You already read that part, bastards and reprobates to the children. Mm -hmm. Mine was, is saying 13, but it might not be 13. Okay, so. It starts, it says, in those days, they laid out the embers of fire. Hmm. So I'll just start at maybe 15 or whatever, because mm -hmm. I'm not seeing where. Okay. okay. Then shall be taken away into the lowest depths of the fire in torments and in confinement. Did you um, read that part yet? That, uh, that is it, yeah. Okay. Immediately after this shall Shemyaza together with them burn and perish. They shall be bound until the consummation of gener many generations. Destroy all the souls addicted to lust and the offspring <coughs> of the watchers for mm. they are they have tyrannized over mankind. Mm -hmm. Let every oppre oppressor perish from the face of the earth. Let every evil work be destroyed. It trips me out how it says, um, the offspring of the watchers have tyrannized mm -hmm. mankind. Ain't that something? Yeah. So are they saying that the offspring of the watchers is still on the earth? Is that what they're saying? Isn't that something? Hmm. The children of the watchers have yeah. terrorized mankind. I'm buffering on that one, y'all. Yeah. The thing is, you know, all of these at this time were destroyed by the flood. Mm -hmm. But we see giants later on coming again. So obviously, it, mm -hmm. it, either more angels were still coming down doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So maybe they got tempted too and decided to come down because those those angels in the original were all locked up. It says right. it in, says it in Jude. Mm -hmm. They're waiting their judgment. Mm -hmm. So then where did these new giants come from? Or this new offspring. They're right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. So we see that there's evidence of the same thing happening again right. in the earth. Now, yeah. one thing I wanted to point out, too, um, there was a time, there was, a, there was actually a documentary that we included in, I believe, Whited Out Part 1 or 2, one of those. Um, but they were saying that there were these barbarians that came and infiltrated um, a certain region of the world, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, some have connected the barbarians uh, to the Neanderthal, mm -hmm. right? But these barbarians, they infiltrated the bloodline again. Yeah. Now, initially, they came out real wild, but remember in the documentary, it talk, yeah. talked about how um, over the decades, the offspring that continued to be born just calmed down a bit more. Yeah. So they started off real wild. They said they were like evil spirits that came up out of the swamps. That's right. Do y'all remember that part in the documentary? <laughs> yeah. yeah. They said these barbarians were like evil spirits that came up out of the swamps. Mm -hmm. And they infiltrated the bloodline of mankind again, right? And then over time, the children just begin to mellow out, mellow out a bit, but that blood is still there. That's right. Okay. That barbarian Neanderthal gene is still there. So it kind of reminds me when it's when it says the children of the watchers. And no, notice they weren't giants. Mm -hmm. So after a bit, the children didn't have to be giants. So people, That's if you're right. just looking for big, tall um, humans. Right. Okay. Now <clears throat> the size has kind of averaged out to just average human size. Mm -hmm. So who are these people? That terrorize mankind. I believe. And it I says, let ahead. every oppressor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who is an oppressive group in the planet today? It has the DNA of mm. a Neanderthal. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm yeah. not trying to be mean, people. But I'm trying to get people to tie up the loose ends. Yeah. I'm trying to get y'all to string together the knowledge. Right. Now, if you have been... Um, far removed from that and you've been sanctified and you've been grafted in and all of that, no worries. But there is still a group of people that are terrorizing and oppressing people on this earth. Yeah. To this day, it is what it is. That's right. It is what it is. Wow. You know, um, 
is really something when you look at it because it knows it mentions the oppressors, right? Mm-hmm. Which are the same people who have the Neanderthal DNA, mm-hmm. which I believe that Neanderthal DNA is actually uh, fallen angel DNA or giant the, the Nephilim DNA. And so this thing is crazy <laughs> when you think about it. You know, when they were showing some of the first Neanderthals and how they look, they had huge heads. They still got some of these statues, not statues, actual skulls of heads this big. Big heads like this here. I look like the eyebrows uh, were protruding above the the normal, you know, and it's like these things, this stuff is real. You know, and there there's a time, and we're living in that time right now where truth sounds just like H-A-T-E. That's yeah. what it sounds like. Yeah. Truth sounds like that to some people because they're so used to the we yeah. are the world scenario. We are the world. You know what I'm saying? We are the children. They're so used to that narrative, but we got to keep it real. In these last days, because of the powers of darkness increasing in the earth, yeah. people need to have the truth so they can sort this mess out, right? Yeah, you need it. Regardless if you red, yellow, black, or white, you yeah. need the truth so you can sort this stuff out, right? Yeah. While we have blood running warm in our veins, we have therefore opportunity mm-hmm. to seek the most high with a repentant heart. Yes. Right? But if somebody lying to you and they want to make you feel good because of the flesh that you're wrapped in, don't try to make me feel good about nothing. Yeah. Right? If I were a white person, I would be running to the altar trying to see what I can do to have my soul saved. Being a so-called, yeah. so-called black person, brown person, yeah. melanated person, see what you need to do to be regrafted in because you were broken off. That's right. Right? Whoever you are, you better make sure that your anchor holds. Make sure that your anchor holds. Yes. I have to make sure that my anchor holds. That's right. Yeah, who has to make sure his anchor holds? That's right. And grips that solid rock. We are all in that particular position. That's right. Right? Your skin color ain't going to save you. I don't care if you white, black, brown, whatever you are. I don't care what color your eyes are. None of that. You can't go to heaven and say, scan my eyes. They're blue. Let me in. None of that's going to work. You cannot go and put your palm in front of something at the gates of heaven and say, look, I'm melanated. (laughs) Let me in. None of that's going to work. Exactly. It ain't going to work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Uh, let's go to... I can read this part here. It says, And um, and destroy all the spirits of the reprobate and the children of the watchers because they have wronged mankind. Destroy all wrong from the face of the earth and let every evil work come to an end and let the plant of righteousness and the truth appeal. It shall be proved a blessing. The works of righteousness and truth shall be planted in truth and joy forevermore. And then shall all the righteous escape and shall live till they beget thousands of children. And all the days of youth and their, and their old age shall they com- complete in peace. And then shall the whole earth be tilled in righteousness and shall be planted with trees and be full of blessings. Let me scroll down here. Every tree of delight shall be planted in it. Mm -hmm. In it shall vines be planted, and the vine which shall be planted in it shall yield fruit to satiety. Every seed which shall be sown in it shall produce for one measure a thousand. And one measure of olives shall produce ten presses of oil. Purify the earth from all oppression. Wow. From all injustice. Uh Uh-huh. From all crime. Uh Uh-huh. From all impiety. Uh Uh-huh. And from all pollution. Yes. Which is committed upon it. Exterminate them from the earth. Mm. Then shall all the children of men be righteous, and all nations shall pay me divine honors and bless me, and all shall adore me. The earth shall be cleansed from all corruption, from every crime, from Mm. all punishment, and from all suffering. Neither will I again send a deluge or a flood upon it 
from generation to generation forever. Interesting. So, oh my goodness, that just said a whole lot. If you read between the lines, yeah. If you read between the lines, mm-hmm. yeah. he just said the earth is going to be purged. Look, purify, purge. Ooh, they both got that P U R in the beginning, mm-hmm. don't they? Mm-hmm. P- pur- purify and purge. Mm-hmm. So is he saying the earth is going to be purged from all of the oppressors? Mm-hmm. Yep. All of this injustice, y'all, y'all, we see it all the time, right? Yeah. Where folk will know something is wrong and evil, mm-hmm. but yet and still they will uphold the system that upholds the evil. Yes. This is why you got to separate yourself from this stuff. If you are a person who is um, regrafted in or a person that's grafted in, the mm-hmm. scripture says, if any man, man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. People need to detach themselves from that flesh body of theirs, right? Yes. A lot of folk gonna get themselves in trouble trying to hang on to who they are. Yeah. Talking about um, I'm I'm French, I'm um, Spanish, I'm English, um, <laughs> I'm this, that, and the third. If you if your ancestors are part of those people yeah. who are still to this day oppressing the earth, right? Injustice, crime. Now, when we're talking about crime, we're talking about spiritual crimes, too. Yeah. See, a lot of people, they want to say, you know what? Well, black men commit crime. Black women commit crime. I'm not mm-hmm. talking about the petty crime. These crimes that the Bible is talking about, crimes against humanity. Yeah. Right? Crimes in the earth that have gone from continent to continent to continent, destroying and uprooting. Mm-hmm. Look what King Leopold did. Yeah. He wiped out 10 million Congolese people. Mm-hmm. And those types of genos have happened throughout history by certain groups of people. That's right. Right? And so the Most High is pulling off the veil. He's revealing all of this stuff. Yeah. All the secret places are being revealed now. Folk ain't going to be able to hide themselves. Mm-hmm. This is the time for repentance. Yes. Right? What was that scripture that we read in Acts? Can I can I go to that before we finish this? Sure. I want I want people to understand why. I believe it was Acts the twenty sixth or twenty seventh chapter. So I'm just gonna give it a try and see if that's it. Okay, but it talked about how you have to uh, go to the the people and the in the Gentiles. How Paul had to go. Uh, to these people and tell them about their sins so that they can have a chance, right? We'll bring that out another time. Watchman did say he wanted to do a whole lesson on that, so I'm not going to hold up the lesson for, for, for this, but I wanted to make a point that the reason why we have to say these things right now is because people need to know, yeah. if you don't hear the truth, if you are not exposed to the truth, how can you repent? Yeah, how right? can you repent? How can you repent if we are not telling you the truth? If we give you a feel-good gospel and make you think that all you got to do is say, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, God, I didn't mean to do that, right? If we give you a feel-good gospel, you won't know what to do. You won't know how to approach the Most High. Because yeah. he already told us, the Word already said that many shall come to him in that day yeah. and say, Lord, Lord. Thank you, Nikki. Lord, Lord, haven't we done all these things in your name? And in your name, cast out devils? Mm -hmm. What is he going to say, y'all? He's going to say the dreaded words. Depart from me. I never knew you. Mm -hmm. Those words are the words of a nightmare. Do you hear what I'm saying? To hear the Most High say, depart from me. I never knew you. That's nightmarish, right? So thank you, Nikki, for sharing that, that passage, Acts 26 and 17. We still want to talk about that, right? I will rescue you from your own people, Mm -hmm. right? And from the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. I will send you to them to open their eyes Mm -hmm. and turn them from darkness to light, right? And from the power of Satan to the most high so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Mm -hmm. This is why we preach the truth. Yeah. Because we are trying to get people to turn their hearts away from darkness. Now, if you want to hold on to the darkness and you want to look here and say that we are filled with H-A-T-E because we're telling you the truth, that's on you. Whether you will hear or forbear, that is up to you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, what's amazing is when you look at the scripture, when Peter um, stood up uh, speaking to um, the people in the book of Acts, 
the scripture says when Peter was done, he, Peter had to say a whole lot. Yes. When he got done saying what he said, it says their hearts were pricked and they repented. Right. So you got to yeah. preach a, 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 a message that's going to cause people to want to repent. Right. If you don't, they're not going to repent. They're going to keep on going in their wickedness, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to finish reading here. This is chapter 15. We're going to skip and go to chapter 15. Is there any answer that said unto me, I heard his voice, fear not, Enoch, thou righteous man and scribe of righteousness. Approach hither and hear my voice and go say to the watchers of heaven who have sent thee to intercede for them. So they actually went and got Enoch. They said, man, go talk to the most high for us, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and he says, you should intercede for men and, and not men for you. So he's talking, he's saying this to the angels. Y'all should be interceding for the men and not men for you, right? Wherefore have you left the high, holy, and eternal heaven and laid with women? Wow. You mean tell me y'all were in heaven? Mm, mm, mm. That, that's like a person. I, I'm, I'm trying to understand it, right? That's like a person being born in heaven, up in heaven, and living there all, all eternity, and he's like, uh, I'm going to go down to earth and commit a sin just so I can go to hell. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I, I don't get that one, right? I'm going to go down to, to earth and commit a horrible sin so I can give up this eternity in heaven and be burning in hell forever. I don't get it. But anyway, it says, And defile yourselves with the daughters of men and take unto yourselves wives, wives, and done like the children of earth, and begotten giants as your sons. And though ye were holy, spiritual, living the eternal life, you have defiled yourself with the blood of women, and begot children with the blood of flesh. And the children of men have lusted after flesh and blood as those who do die and perish. Therefore, have I given them wives also that they might be that they might impregnate them and beget children of them, and thus nothing might be wanting to them on earth. But you were formerly spiritual, living an eternal life, and immortal for all generations of the world, and therefore I have not appointed wives for you. He said, You didn't need no wives. Mm -hmm. You wasn't flesh. You were spirits. For as for the spiritual ones of the heaven, in heaven is their dwelling. And now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth. And on the earth shall be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they were born uh, from both men of the holy watchers is their beginning and primal origin, but shall be evil spirits on the earth. Evil spirits shall they be called. These are the demons. So all the demons you see that's going about and possessing people and all this, these are the spirits of the Nephilim. Mm -hmm. When they died, these spirits didn't go to hell. They're out roaming the earth, creating havoc. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. An increase of wickedness. Yeah. lawlessness because of this thing. I want to say this real quickly too. So you can imagine this, right? What if the angels didn't come down and do all this? Earth wouldn't have gotten as wicked. Isn't that mm. something? Yeah. It wouldn't have gotten as wicked. Mm, mm, mm. But that outside source made a difference, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Wow. And as for the spirits in heaven, in heaven shall be their dwelling. But as for the spirits of the earth, which were born upon the earth, the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, work destruction on the earth, cause trouble. Wow, are you hearing this? And take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst, and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women, because they have produced they that they have proceeded from them. Are you seeing this? So he basically said, these wicked spirits, they're going to oppress, they're going to destroy, they're going to attack, they're going to do battle. They're going to bring forth destruction on the earth. They're going to cause trouble. Mm. And they can't eat. 
They can't eat. They can't feel their hunger and thirst. That's why they always doing it. Because they can't get satisfied. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. And we're going to read this last chapter here. And we'll be done. This is a short chapter. But anyway, I wanted you to understand how this, this wickedness, this lawlessness came about from all these spirits and angels and demons. And they push it to this day. This is why we see an increase in the land to this day. This is why you see people are becoming, um, um, what's the word for it? Desensitized to wickedness that's right in your face. Right. Right? This is why the world has become desensitized to it, right? Mm. Now it's no big deal to see a man walking down the street in full drag looking like a woman. You know? It's out there now. It's everywhere now. You see? I don't believe they look like women. Yeah. <laughs> Dressing, dressing <laughs> effeminate. You know? Right, right. Whenever they say they act yeah. like women, I, I say to myself, um, I think I feel like it's kind of like a, you know, insult a little bit. You know what I it's mean? It's a blend. What it I is, know what you mean. They take on that <laughs> feminine way, right? You right. know, and they exaggerate it pretty badly. It, yeah, very, very yeah. exaggerated. Yeah. So watch this. So society said this is what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna tell you how society hides this thing. Pay attention. So society said, because this happened back in the scriptures, they said, wait a minute, we got a lot of wickedness going on. You know, a lot of wickedness. So we're going to have to kind of control this a little bit. Okay? Get a little bit more authority out here. Try to control it. So what did they do? Esau came up with government. <laughs> mm -hmm. He said, we're going to have some type of law and order. But here's what we're going to do with this law and order. We're going to, of course, get rid of some of this wicked stuff because it's going to make it hard for us to live, right? But some of this other wicked stuff, we're going to do. So that's what worldly law does. Mm -hmm. Law and order. Worldly law and order will say, you know what? You cannot go out here, rape and kill and steal, but you can fornicate. <laughs> <laughs> right? You can fornicate and... You can't um, do this and do that, but you can lie. You can cheat, mm -hmm. right? You can do all these other things, though, right? That's how the law is. And it'll also say um, that if someone goes and invades another country and they take over, it's just called a conquest. Yeah. I was really not surprised, but kind of surprised when I went to one of those um, AI things and I asked them about certain things that have taken place in the earth, mm -hmm. and it made it seem like it was a heroic conquest, right? Yeah. But people in Africa don't see it like that. No. They look at it like you took our land, you um, genoed our people. Yeah, right. You you deleted people off the planet, but you calling it conquest? Yes. So that's what we mean. They they certain things they'll paint in a certain light. Right. Like it wasn't so bad. It was just conquest. These, these were heroic right. men who conquered the earth. But this was war. The who conquered? I mean, that's how it is in the war. Right. The, who came up with that statement? All is fair in love and war. Mm -hmm. All is fair in love and war. So they're letting you know everything in love is fair. Everything in war is fair. So if I take all of your land and your women, that's fair because this is a time of war. Yeah. I find it strange that that's the first thing y'all decided to pick a king that's going to rule over Israel. And the first thing he do is he save the women and the cattle and the, and, and, and all these. And the other, leader. And the leader, right? <laughs> when y'all told him to destroy and kill them all, right? So what was up with the women, right? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and so he probably looking like I see saw now. Wait a minute. Look at these women right here, man. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, he's probably calling on one of the um, guys with the sword. Is about to start saying, "Hold on, hold on, hold on! Don't kill them." Man, women. she kind of cute. I don't know about yeah, say, that. Say, say them, man. Say them women over there, man. What you about to kill them for? The guy with the sword, like Didn't the Most High, tell us to kill them. You know, and, and, I mean, think about how all this stuff, how his mind got a hold of him. Listen, so lust. obedience is better than sacrifice. That's right. The lust got a hold of them, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we look at the scriptures and we see these things coming to pass, Satan knew that he said, okay, okay, okay. I got to allow Esau to come up with this this type of, 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 of law and order that ain't really going to be law and order. It's just going to 
keep I, I can't have everybody kill each other. Right? How am I going to grow my empire? Satan's smart. He ain't no dummy. Satan said, how can I grow my empire of all my demons everybody just fighting each other and everything? I need a little bit of order so we can grow. Not you to, know? Not to mention, Scripture actually says <laughs> the powers that be yeah. are of Yah. Yeah. Right? He need all of this stuff in place yeah. to bring us to end time biblical That's prophecy. Right. right? If there was a righteous man sitting up in the White House right now, certain things couldn't happen. That's right. It could right? happen. Don't we need certain things to happen so it can line up with biblical prophecy? That's so right. the Most High is playing everybody um, like yeah. pawns almost, right? <laughs> everybody is pleasure, <laughs> right? Yeah. right? Everybody is being moved about on this yeah. board of life yeah. that we call life. That everybody's being moved about. Okay, now you move here. Okay, let me get you out of here. Boom! boom, boom, boom. Everybody's being moved around. Watch this. So Yah says, you know what? I got a wickedness that need to come to pass over here, but this president here, he he ain't gonna he ain't gonna push this. He ain't gonna do it. I gotta get him. Out. I, I gotta get this president out of office. I need somebody really wicked to be in office. Mm -hmm. So um, I need someone go down to cause this to happen. This person here is the person I want in office. He's gonna bring about the slaying of people and. And the the, the 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 Antichrist will be able to step right in and start beheading folks. And I need I need somebody in office that's gonna bring about this here. And so the angels come down, they set the stage, and next thing you know, you got this man that rise up in office, and everybody think he, he there because it's a good thing. Yeah, y'all put him there, but sometimes y'all put the allow wicked people to get in office. Scripture told you that. It says it in the word, right? Nebuchadnezzar got in his uh, got in office because Yah allowed him to get in office. Darius and all these other kings back in the days, they got in office because Yah put them in office. Wait a minute. Didn't the scripture say this cause Yah raised up Pharaoh? Come on now. That he may show his power in him. So <laughs> Pharaoh was raised up just for the purpose that Yah, Yah said, okay, Pharaoh, I raise you up. Okay, raise you up in power. Now I'm about to knock you down to show my power. <laughs> <laughs> right that's the word mm -hmm. can't get around that that's right uh chapter 16 it's a small chapter there's only like four verses enoch Go. chapter 16 and as the death of the nephilim wheresoever their ruach had departed from their bodies let their flesh that which is perishable be destroyed before the judgment thus shall they perish until the day of the great consummation of the great world the judgment a destruction shall take place of the watchers and the impious and now to the watchers who have sent you to pray for them who in the beginning were in heaven say in heaven have you been secret things however, have not been manifest to you. Yet have you known a reprobated mystery. And this you have related to women in the hardness of your heart. And by that mystery have women and mankind multiplied evils upon the earth. Say to them, never therefore shall you obtain peace. Mm, mm, mm. You, told me you ain't gonna get no peace. So basically, he was talking about the judgments that was going to come on those watchers that initially started this thing back in the days. Mm -hmm. They originally started in the end of chains, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's just amazing when you look at the world today, you see all this wickedness is going forth. There's demons behind, there's angels behind and stuff, wicked angels. Yes. You know, it's, they're behind all of this, this increase of lawlessness in the land. I mean, it's so crazy right now. Some of the things I'm hearing and seeing, I'm scratching my head like, man, mm -hmm. you know, and people are still turning a deaf ear and a, but the, like what they call them three monkeys, hear no evil, see no evil, speak, speak no, no evil. evil. Mm -hmm. it's, that's how people are. They see somebody getting wrongly done and they'll sit there and close their eyes to it. Mm -hmm. Close their ears to it. I don't hear, I don't see that. I don't, you know, they do that. Mm -hmm. And it's right there in your face. And they'll say, basically speak no evil mean. Ain't none of my business. So yeah. I got nothing to say about it. So a lot of people sitting back watching evil, multiplying in the earth, right? And they won't say a thing. You know, yeah. especially you think about the ruling class and how they know that this world, this earth has been terrible to so-called black folk. 
Why do I keep going back here? Yeah. Because a lot of biblical prophecy in the last days deal with the waking up of Yah's people. Yeah. Right? So this is why you need to know who is who. <laughs> but you have folk who literally see and know this stuff happening on a daily basis, and they won't open their mouth to say one word. Right? They will know that something has happened in the bank where they, they're uh, being unrighteous. They'll know that somebody's land has been taken. Yeah. There was a story that was shared with me recently where down in Virginia, um, all of these um, so-called black men have been just popping up yeah. deceased, deleted, right? Mm -hmm. And they've been finding their bodies on this particular land that was owned by one of their relatives. And it's been a number of them, mysterious. And each time they say, oh, suicide. No, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself, right? And folk know that really that's know. not what's happening. Right? And yeah. they go to bed at night with their conscience completely cleared of it. Sleep good. Right? Mm -hmm. Do, don't you know that you're going to have to answer for that <laughs> wickedness in your yeah, brain? Yeah, you're going to have to answer for it. You know this stuff is <laughs> happening. You know the people who did it, but you won't open your mouth to say one right. word. Nine times out of ten, most of those people have been turned over to a reprobate mind, and they will not be able to repent. Now watch this. Watch this, right? Because this story here was one that really made me see how wicked the world is and how wicked folk are that watches this. Because most black people, they were like, they were like, this is wrong. But Trayvon Martin, let me ask you this question. If George Zimmerman showed up and had a uniform on and had a badge and said, excuse me, son, I just want to find out what's going on. You, you, you live around here or whatever. Do you think Trayvon might have would have responded like he did? Trayvon Martin responded like he did because here you got this guy following him on the street. At right? night. At night. And he probably and this, already had the gun out. Yeah, and this boy ain't nothing but about 16 years old. He's 17. Looking, 17 years old, and he's looking back, and he says, man, this guy followed me. So he's speeding up, and this guy following him and everything, right? You got to understand, even when he got on the phone, he said, he said man, there's something going on, right? And so you got to understand, you mean to tell me that People saw the boy as the wicked one. Yep. And here you got this white guy who just hunts this boy down, provokes a fight with him, mm -hmm. and then because he's losing a fight, he pull out his gun and shoot the boy. I, I'm telling you right now, that was enough right there that made me see society and how it is and how they look at what's going on out here. And when you're white, you're right. And when you're black... You better get back. And we don't. And the folk keep talking about oh, he was he wasn't white. He was um, Mexican or Latino or whatever. His father was white. Okay. Mm, yeah. So please, his skin was white, and white people supported him. So it doesn't matter if he was European fully. Yeah. Right. That's just a game that people play. Yeah. All we know is that America supported the guy. They supported America him. America said that he had a right to defend himself. How are you gonna hunt somebody down? You got a weapon in your hand. You hunt this person down. And they see the weapon and of fear for their lives. Yeah. So what if he hit him first? He was trying to get away from this man, right? And so when we put the scenario, if it was the other way around, no one, we all know that ain't nobody in this country would say that if a black man was following a 17-year-old boy right. with a weapon, where are you going? What you doing? None of you. You know good and well in your heart that you would not say that that black man had a right to take that 17-year-old white child out. Watch this. And he was the one following him. Watch this. Let me tell you something. When you grow up in the streets, and you, you I didn't really grow up in the streets, but I, I was in the hood pretty much. I wasn't out there in the streets like that. But let me explain something to you. You already have a certain way of thinking because... At the time, when I grew up as a teenager, there were a lot of little fights in the streets and we got into a lot. Of, every summer we were out there fighting yep. and stuff. With the hands. With the hands, right. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we rock rocks and sticks and, you know, mm. things like that, right. But I want to explain something to you, right. Automatically, we knew that if you were in a jam and you weren't sure you can get out, you're going to suck a punch them first because you know if they're coming for you, that's it. Mm. You, it's just an automatic thing, right. So for, for a person... You got to get this right. I, I was in a situation one time where, um, you know, you got people that work with you on the job, okay? And on this particular job that I worked, there was a young lady that I saw all the time because I, I would take space and service station. I see the lady. I, hey, how you doing? Whatever, right? And so this particular day, I had went to the grocery store, and we would cash our checks at the grocery store, right? 
So I'm in line to cash my check at the grocery store. I'm sitting there. She comes in the door, and I see. I say, "Hey, how you doing?" Right. When I said, "Hey, how you doing?" I didn't realize her boyfriend was walking behind her. This dude was like six four, six five, big, walking with an attitude, looking mad as I don't know what behind her. Right. So when I spoke to her, he looks over at me like this, and was like, and looked at her. And I said, oh, boy, I knew what was going on. So I'm in line like this here. I had something that I had purchased. One of them was a, a bottle. It was kind of a glass bottle. Had it in my hand. I'm sitting there like this here, right, standing in line. This dude comes up behind me. I'm going to tell you what he did. He comes up behind me. I'm short. And he, he gets about this far away from me, standing over me in line, looking down over my head like this here. And I knew he was there. And I sat there, I hit my hand on that bottle. And I said, you know what? He ain't about to mess me up. I said, it just, I said, ain't no way in the world I'm going to let this big dude mess me up. I said, if he don't back up off me in three seconds, I'm going to bust him in the head with this bottle. Mm -hmm. You hear what I said? Mm -hmm. I stood there, I counted, and then he slowly moved away from me like this. Now, I was saved at the time. <laughs> Sanctified and filled with, filled the, Holy with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and I wasn't about to go down getting stomped and beat down by this 6'5 dude. You get what I'm saying? And so I stood there, and when he walked away, I was like, thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. Because I knew I was going to have to hit this dude and go. Bust up. <laughs> you know what I so mean? So it's a common thing, then. <laughs> It's common. It's a common thing if someone is after you. Yes. That you have to plan your escape. And that's exactly. all Trayvon was doing. I like what Brother Hebrew said here. He says, um, <sighs> we can't forget that George Zimmerman had a um, signed a bag of Skittles as an autograph for his supporters. So this is what we're talking about. We live in a nation where people coin people like Zimmerman as heroes, right? Right. They wanted Zimmerman's autograph. So I want that person yeah. and all of his supporters, the people who bought the um, gun at auction, all of it. Yeah. Make sure that when you stand before the Most High that you explain to him why it was important for you to buy that gun, yeah. why you wanted this man's autograph, why you supported him. Make sure that when you stand before him, you have a good explanation. Yeah. Because you're going to have to give an account for that foolishness. Yeah, you're going to have to give account for it. See, everybody just, they look at this life right here like it's the only thing that matters. But yeah. they forget that everyone has that day that they're going to stand before the, mo yeah. the Most High. And don't think for one minute that you're going to stand before him with that wickedness and that rottenness in your heart. And he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful yeah. servant. If you think the Most High is going to say well done to you and you a wicked person. You are mm -hmm. deeply deceived. Yeah, you deeply deceived. So in essence, what we're saying is, we I, I knew it then. Mm -hmm. I saw things there. I said, wow, this is crazy. This is great. We ain't talking about a cop. Mm -hmm. We're talking about just an ordinary citizen. Mm -hmm. You know, they got the, that he can do something like this. Even after the police told him not to even bother him. He said, no, oh, you told me not. I'm going to bother this dude. That's why I, I, when I look at society today, and I look at the at the system and the government, and all these people out here, I can see the wickedness in a lot of these people. Sit back and they smile at you, say hi to you, but they got wickedness in their heart. You understand what I'm saying? And so that being said, I know, I see the increase of lawlessness because people are getting away with all kinds of stuff. Right. Getting away with all kinds of stuff. You bump somebody and be sitting back with a gun on their side. Bump somebody to start a conflict and then pull out the gun and shoot them. So again... This is why they probably got rid of the Book of Enoch. Yeah. Right? It's starting to resurface now, but for a long time, a lot of these books, they called yeah. them lost or hidden yeah. or removed, right? Yeah. They didn't want these books in there because it was just too much wow. pointing to too many things. Yeah. Now, reading these passages that we did in the Book of Enoch is telling you yeah. that the children of the watchers are going to terrorize mankind yeah. in the last days, right? oppression, crime, all of that stuff is going to increase in the land. The earth is going to be polluted. All of this stuff is happening, right? And so, is the scripture revealing us, mm -hmm. revealing to us who the man of sin is? Isn't that something? Is that what's happening? Who's ushering in the return of the Nephilim? Hmm? <laughs> and they don't have to come forth as giants, y'all. Nope. 
It is what it is. It is what it is. Watch this. Let me say this real quickly. I had a brother. He ended up um, passing a few years back. But my brother said when he would go to the main library in Detroit, and he would get he had a special book of Enoch that was there. It was incredible. He said, man, I'm telling you, man, you need to see this book, man. It's, it's old, real old, 1800s or something like that, right? And he said he would go there and get this book. And he said one time he went there and the lady was like, uh, that book, we, we, we don't have that book. I don't know what you're talking about. We can't, can't find it. He was like, I'm looking for this book. There was this book. And he said the person was just being evasive with him, right? So he said he finally went and got somebody above them and told them about the book that was there. And so what they ended up doing was... They went and found the book and brought it to him. He said, yeah, this is the book I want to take out. So he took the book out. He told me that he, he used to street preach all the time, right, down in the Detroit area, downtown Detroit. He was street preaching. And he said whenever he would bring, he said he, said he, would, he would be careful in mentioning the, the fallen angels and the spirits. He said because these spirits, a lot of these spirits would always show up whenever he was out there preaching. He said they would show up in people and be so wicked it was crazy, mm-hmm. you know. And so that's something to think about. Mm-hmm. These spirits, they know what's going on, you know. Hallelujah. Um, I'm gonna say this before we close out. Mm-hmm. Why would the scripture says you shall know them by their fruits? Yeah. See, the world is trying to tell you who is who. Yeah. They want to say, "Hey, y'all are the children of Ham." Children mm-hmm. of Ham, right? Um, here are the children of so and so, and these are the children of so and so over here. Yes. The world wants to tell everybody who is who, yeah. right? This system wants to label everybody as they see fit. Yes. But what did the Bible tell us to do? It says, "Ye shall know them by their fruits." By their fruits, right? Yeah. And how did it say you're going to know who the children of Yasher El are? Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it is what it is, y'all. But it says, "Ye shall know them by their curses." Yeah. It says, "The curses shall be a sign upon them." That's right. To testify as to who they are. That's right. So, as for everybody else, you shall know them by their fruits, or their actions, their deeds. That's right. That's how you're going to determine who is who in the earth, that's right? right? And so that's how we do it. But the world don't want to do that. They just want to say, hey, we said this is who we are. Yeah. You have to accept it. But anybody who wants the truth, the truth going to make you free. Yeah. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Because once you're armed with the truth. Yes. Once you're armed with the truth, that's all you need. Yeah. Yahushua is the way, the truth and the light. That's why I heard <laughs> this one person that's a, um, you know, one of those um, Ashkenazims. Right, yeah, it was making a statement that um, um, by their blessings, you know, you look at the blessings. That's what you want to look at because they are the richest people on the planet. <laughs> you know, you do the um, do research and, and uh, uh, companies that are making millions, even billions of dollars, are owned the by ish these ish people, right? Mm-hmm. And so, notice this here, right, that. They say that this proves that we are his people because of how blessed we are. Well, wait a minute. Let's Weren't skip. those blessings contingent <laughs> on what? Interesting. Those blessings were contingent on righteousness. That's right. So we talked about this before in they the past, y'all. Can't no group of people on this planet, not even so-called black people, say that their righteousness. That's right. No group of people, red, that. yellow, black, or white, no one can say that they are financially rich because right. they are uh, spiritually um, obedient righteous or blessed. Righteous and following right? God, exactly. They can't, nobody can say can't that. Can't nobody say ain't that. none righteous. No, not no, one. No, not one. <laughs> so can't nobody use Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14, to That's say right. that this proves who they are. That's nobody. Right. Nobody. Right? But the, the second part of that, the second half of that, it tells you how you're going to know. Because right. it said the, the the first part of that chapter was given to say this is what I told my people. That's right. This is what I told my people, but they didn't do it. So this is how you're gonna know them. That's you shall right. know them by their curses. The curses are gonna be on them as a sign. That's right. That's right? right. But see, those no don't nobody want to hold. They don't want to attach right. that to themselves at all because then the story don't make sense anymore. It don't make sense. And they sit back and say, "Wait a minute, though. You know, 
what am I going to say? I mean, I got this billion dollar company here, you know. And then y'all have strong family <laughs> values, don't you? You have strong alliances. Yeah. Didn't it say the children of Yashrael going to be fatherless, right? The father's not going to yeah. be in the home. Not fatherless as in they don't have a father, but right. he's not going to be in the home. He's going to be in the home. Right? But hey, y'all are intact. Everybody's That's intact. Right. Yeah. So it's a whole lot of stuff that just don't make sense. Don't make sense. This is why don't nobody want to debate us with the book. Mm -mm. They don't want to debate us with the book. They want to just debate debate us with the fact that um, if certain people got the land right now. So yeah. they say possession is nine tenths of the law. Yeah. So since we <laughs> since we have the land, that proves it. Since we know the land, that people. proves it. Y'all ain't got nothing. Y'all's people. <laughs> Y'all still over there, still, still in the land of your captivity. Well, didn't the Bible say? <laughs> yeah. It said that we would be, though. We would be, yeah. Right? So that's why I say nobody wants to debate us by the book. That's right. Don't nobody want to line up with this right here. No, they just get to crying. Saying this one thing, you know those statement they say all the time. They get to cry. You're, You're so mean. you hate us. You hate You're me anti. anti. You know, yeah, right. But they they don't want to debate us on this. Not on the word without all that crying and stuff. You know. But anyway, maybe folks, we should start crying too. Yeah, about every little thing. Cry everything. We love y'all, <laughs> family. We thank you for your time. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we want you all to be blessed. Enjoy the rest of your day and, and go over this word again. And I, I I urge you all, read the book of Enoch. The book of Enoch is incredible. There's a yes, lot of stuff in the book opener. of Enoch. Yeah, yes. It opens your eye and makes you see what's going on. Hallelujah. Well, you be blessed, blessed family. Now, I want to thank all our moderators, first of all, and mm -hmm. thank those that were a blessing to us also. Hallelujah. We appreciate it and we want you all to have and enjoy the rest of your day. That's right. Shabbat shalom, family. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.